This video describes how a CRTP pacemaker can be implanted using the right iliac vein in a patient with no other uh, options. Uh, and so you can see here we have the LV lead, the RV lead, uh, and the right atrial lead. So we start off recognizing uh, that the inguinal ligament uh, divides the femoral area uh, from the iliac vein uh, above the inguinal ligament. And uh, so here we have a, a picture, and here's the inguinal ligament, and the iliac vein uh, is above the inguinal ligament. So it's important to recognize that it's there, but also that it goes directly posterior just after it crosses uh, the inguinal ligament. So you can't, it's hard to go very far above the inguinal ligament. So to know where to stick uh, the iliac vein, the first step was to put in uh, a wire in the femoral vein and then use that as a target uh, to get access. So we got access with three separate sticks uh, and we're using long uh, peel away sheaths. So we were able to advance using a standard stylet driven lead uh, screwed it into the RV apex. Um, and then the next step was to locate the coronary sinus. And so we started using um, an EP catheter and an, an SRO uh, fast cath guiding catheter um, and we kept looking and looking and couldn't find it um, using an, the CP catheter and so we went to contrast injection uh, through a hand-shaped multi-purpose catheter and eventually we were able to find the CS and it, it turned out that this patient had a double uh, chamber right ventricle. So in addition to her other venous anomalies, she had that, which made finding the CS quite difficult. It was very much higher than you would expect way up here by the uh, his location. So we were able to locate the CS and then from there uh, we went with our uh, back with the SRO 50 degree curve, um, 8.5 French internal diameter, 63 centimeter and we advanced that uh, into the coronary sinus using a deflectable EP catheter. So now we have the SRO in the coronary sinus. And now the, the key is to be able to put the LV lead in and still be able to remove the SRO. So we cut off about 15 centimeters of the SRO and then took an 11 French hemostatic uh, peel away sheath and cut it short, and then took the uh, cutoff portion uh, and then put it over top of the outside of the SRO. So it turns out that the outside diameter of their SRO is right around 11 French, and the inside diameter of this peel away sheath is 11, so it makes a nice fit. And you could, if you wanted to, you could put a little derma bond on there to, to make that seal better. but. Uh, now, now the goal is to get the lead in place, so we utilize the combination of a vertebral vein selector, this shape here, telescoped inside a renal LVI subselector, and we connected it to the contrast injection system. Um, and then we, so that's what we have here. We have the 5.5 the, the, uh, French renal LVI. We have the vertebral vein selector going through the hub of the hemostatic valve, which is then connected to the modified, which is the, uh, part of the modified fast cath. Um, and we put the, put this all up over a glide wire, uh, and now we're in the CS, and you can see the wire going into the CS, and we're going to track the uh, vertebral vein selector up over the glide wire uh, and into the CS, and then take the glide wire out and then use the vein selector uh, to locate a target branch with little puffs of contrast and catheter manipulation. There's the target vein. 
uh, we advance the wire into the target vein and then from there advance the vertebral shaped vein selector over the wire and then use that combination of the wire stabilized vein selector uh, to get the subselector deep into the branch. Remove the vein selector retaining uh, one of the wires and then we're able to advance the lead nice and deep uh, into that target branch. Uh, we're now cutting away the renal LVI subselector um, and then we peeled away the 11 French hemostatic sheath and then using a cutter we cut away the 8.5 French SRO fast cast uh, with a Medtronic slicing tool and then um, tied the leads down uh, and then tunneled up to a location on the abdominal wall uh, for the pacemaker. So this is how it can be done if, if uh, there's no other choice. Um, I'm, I'm told by the patients that it's well tolerated despite my initial impression that it would be pretty uncomfortable but it seems to be pretty well tolerated and I think is a far better option uh, than sending uh, a patient for epicardial uh, system.